Managing a global team, right? Sometimes it feels like you're juggling time zones more than anything else. It's a common struggle. Well, today we're looking at Global Sync IO. They're tackling this head on using an AI tool called CMeet. Interesting. I've heard of CMeet. They say it's like having, get this, a 24 7 assistant specifically for your global team. Ambitious. Right. Thinking We're talking time zones, cultural differences, the whole works. Those are big ones. Huge. And we've got excerpts from their experience using CMeet claiming it cracks the top three challenges of managing remote teams, which, if true, could be a game changer. What were the specific challenges Global Sync IO was facing? So picture this. They've got teams in Silicon Valley. Okay. Standard Tech Hub. Exactly. And Taiwan. Ah, so right away you've got that time difference. Oh, it's brutal. Plus all the complexities of communication across cultures. Not just the time zones, but that feeling of, you know, are we even on the same page? That lack of being in sync. It's a real productivity killer. Totally. It's not just inconvenience. It's can we create an environment where everyone can actually do their best work? Absolutely. So this C-Meet, how'd they even get into the picture? So they call themselves a meeting co-pilot, which I'll be honest, I immediately imagined a little robot sidekick. I mean, the visual is strong, right? <laughs> but in all seriousness, what does that actually mean in practice? So it's designed to assist with meetings, especially in this global context, taking notes, translating languages on the fly, and keeping everyone in the loop Time zones be darned. Okay, that's addressing a real pain point. Yeah. But how well does it work in reality? Let's dive into the specifics, starting with time zones, the ultimate enemy. The bane of global teams everywhere. Tell me about it. The case study highlights how Global Sync IO practically eliminated those late night, early morning meetings using CME. Now, that's a win I think we can all get behind. How they manage that? One way is through selective participation. Selective participation. Sounds intriguing. So not everyone has to be at every meeting. You're picking up what I'm putting down. You might not attend live, but you're still in the loop. Okay, walk me through this. How does that actually work? So CMeet can, in a way, attend for you, taking mm -hmm. detailed notes, Good. catching all the key decisions, even creating summaries tailored to your needs. Like a personal meeting secretary powered by AI. That's impressive. Right. And this all ties into how they keep everyone on track across those time zones. Okay, I see where you're going with this. So someone misses a meeting because they're in, say, a completely different time zone. It happens all the time. And instead of having to dig through hours of recordings or wade through pages of minutes. Nightmare. They can get a quick but comprehensive summary from CMeet. Exactly. And this directly addresses that disconnect Global Sync IO was feeling between, say, their Silicon Valley and Taiwan teams. Everyone's on the same page no matter when they log in. It's like a global team equalizer at least when it comes to information. Yeah. I like it. But we've only tackled one challenge so far. What about communication across cultures? All right, that's a whole other beast. We all know how even a small miscommunication can spiral out of control, <laughs> especially in a global business context. Exactly. And this is where CMeet's real-time transcription comes in. And we're not just talking English to Spanish here. No. Even more impressive. We're talking automatic detection and transcription of multiple languages, including, crucially for Global Sync IO, Mandarin. So their Taiwan team could literally have meetings in Mandarin. You got it. And CMeet made sure everyone else understood, no matter what language they spoke. Wow. That removes a significant barrier for non-native English speakers. Huge. The case study even mentioned a developer in Taiwan saying that having those real-time subtitles, even though English wasn't their first language, it made them more confident participating in meetings. That's fantastic. It's not just about understanding the words, it's about feeling included. Creating a space where everyone feels comfortable contributing their ideas. Exactly. And that, I think, gets to the heart of what makes managing global teams so challenging. It's about building that sense of trust and understanding across cultures. Building bridges, not walls. Exactly. But we still got one more challenge to tackle, right? That feeling of not really knowing what your team on the other side of the world is doing day to day. Oh, that's a big one. And this is where it gets really futuristic. CME claims to provide insights into how your team functions. Like, here's the data on your team dynamics. Data-driven insights into teamwork. Now, that piques my interest. How do they pull that off? It's all about the data. They take everything, transcripts, who attended what, even, get this, sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis. Like, they can tell if a meeting went well based on people's vibes. That's the idea. 
It's all about painting a picture of how teams actually function, not just what tasks they're checking off. So going beyond just capturing information to actually understanding it, using that data to... To provide actionable insights. Yeah. Managers can see who the key communicators are, what topics are causing a buzz, even if there are any communication silos happening. Communication silos, those are. Death traps for productivity. Truth. But if you can spot them early. Exactly. Or imagine you're a manager and you want to identify emerging leaders within a team, CMeet could potentially highlight those who are already stepping up communication-wise. So instead of just going with your gut, you've got data backing it up. Precisely. It's about empowering managers with information so they can make better decisions about how their teams collaborate. All right. So much to unpack here. But we've got to ask, is it all sunshine and roses? Are there any potential downsides to this level of, let's be honest, surveillance? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. Because the potential benefits are huge, but the ethical implications, we can't ignore those. All right, so let's talk ethics. What are the red flags we should be watching out for? Transparency is key. Teams need to know what data is being collected, how it's being used, the whole nine yards. No one wants to feel like they're being spied on. Right, that feeling of big brother is never a good look. Definitely not. It's a balancing act. We want to use data to make teams better, but not at the expense of individual privacy and autonomy. It's like technology should be a tool, not a dictator. Well said. The human element, that can't get lost in the shuffle. Right, because at the end of the day, it's still humans working with humans, even with all this fancy AI in the mix. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Time zones, cultural differences, even the wild world of team dynamics, all through the lens of CMEET. It's a fascinating case study, and it raises a lot of important questions for anyone managing a global team. Because it's easy to get seduced by shiny new tech, but... But the real question is, does it actually solve the problems you're facing? Mm. And just as importantly, is it the right fit for your team's culture? It's easy to think, oh, AI will magically fix everything, but it's really about finding those tools that actually work for the way your team operates. And not just the tools, but the whole approach, right? Yeah. AI can be powerful, but it's not a substitute for building a healthy team culture from the ground up. 100%. It's more about asking ourselves, okay, what are the sticking points in how we're working now? Are we making things harder than they need to be? And if so, are there tools out there that can help us streamline things, make us more efficient? Exactly. But always with that critical eye, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we using this tech responsibly? Because ultimately, technology should be working for us, not the other way around. Right. We don't want to become slaves to the robots, even if they are taking notes for us. Exactly. It's about finding that sweet spot where tech enhances our ability to connect and collaborate as humans. Mm. That's where the magic happens. Couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. So as we wrap up this CMeet deep dive, what are the key takeaways our listeners should keep in mind? Well, first off, let's acknowledge the challenges of managing global teams are real. It's not just a matter of sending a few emails and hoping for the best. Time zones, cultural differences, those communication breakdowns, they're not going away anytime soon. Exactly. But like we saw with Global Sync IO, there are solutions out there, whether it's AI powered tools or simply creating a culture where open communication mm. and just as important empathy are valued. Being proactive, not just reactive. Absolutely. This whole case study got me thinking the way we work is changing so rapidly. It's not just about where we do the work. It's about finding ways to work together no matter where we are in the world. And that's exciting. Because it opens up so many possibilities for who we can collaborate with, the kinds of projects we can tackle. Breaking down those geographical barriers, tapping into a global talent pool, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. It is. And it's a trend that I think we're only going to see more of in the years to come. So, as always, we want to hear from you. What resonated with you about this deep dive into CMEED? Are you facing similar challenges in your own work? Because let's face it, we're all in this together. The more we share our experiences, the more we can learn from each other. Exactly. So keep exploring those ideas, keep asking those tough questions, and until next time, happy collaborating.